misty episode of Photography Behind the Scenes. One evening, I looked at the weather forecast and the conditions were looking like I could, maybe, get a misty morning and so the next day I got up early while it was still dark and I got blessed with a fine amount of fog in the air for some atmospheric photography, which is exactly what I was up to here. I had set up the camera on a tripod facing the field. I had set the intervalometer so that I can run into frame myself and got this here. This is the second photograph of this shoot and I think we're off to a good start. I'm fond of the dark blue outlook and how small I am in the composition, although I wouldn't mind being even further away from the camera. I also like how the motion blur turned out on my body, showing the movement and adding some life to the photo. A little detail I would like to point out because I appreciate it are the spots of lights in the background. I find that they add some perspective to the composition and convey a significant distance. Then I crossed the road and decided to look for another composition on the field on the other side. Again, I set the intervalometer and positioned myself into this photograph. And this time I kept my backpack and didn't run to get more of this explorer of a foreign world kind of look, if you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. Well, I had one job and that was to be in the pictures. <laughs> and how did I do? One out of five photos I'm in the picture, all the other ones I managed to stay out of frame somehow. And I thought I was getting good at this. <laughs> well, let's try again. Try to keep the line. Alright, that is much better but I feel like I am still way too big in frame, but I can't go further because from there on, the field looks like it's been prepared by the farmer. And so I don't want to step into that and be disrespectful. So I shall stay away from that part of the field and I'll just, I guess, go with a wider focal length and try to gain some distance like that. And I can go back a bit. Maybe, maybe this can help. So this is the photo I just got, and as you can see, I'm really big in frame, at least in comparison to how I normally like to position myself in the composition. At first, I didn't like the photograph at all, but then while editing, I decided to crop it in this wide cinemascope aspect ratio, which in my opinion has improved it by a lot. Now, I don't particularly dislike it, but it's also not good in any way. Unfortunately, the power pole at the back is colliding with me, which looks unintentional and just overall really bad. So this is why I decided to try the photograph in a different way. Okay, timer is set. Let's try it like this. Yeah, it's better, but I don't really like it. I just like it when I'm tiny in frame, not, not so big. So... I've now zoomed out from 50 to 35 millimeter. Let's try it once more. This is the result. I tried it once more, but just didn't really get what I was hoping to get. And so in the editing process, I decided that this photo could work if I crop it. However, I think the square format doesn't really fit the subject, but it's the best I could do because the other possibilities were in my eyes all worse. However, I was determined to get at least one decent photo at this spot. So I tried once more. This is the final result from this spot, so overall I think it's okay. The composition feels a bit out of balance, with too much emphasis on the right side, seeing as that car also came into frame at that moment. I think the balance would work better if the car were on the left side of the photograph. Something positive I want to point out is simply the atmosphere. The fog just looks amazing, and this here is the reason why I make the effort of always going out to shoot when it gets foggy because it looks great. However, this spot was not entirely working out for me. This is the best I could do in that moment. Now, in hindsight, I would of course change a couple of things, such as positioning myself on the left maybe, and further away, but as said, that wasn't possible without stepping into the farmer's preparations. So anyway, the result is okay, and I decided to move on. I 
walked down the road for a bit, but quickly returned onto the field, and at one point I spotted a potential composition of a power pole. Here's the result. I got this photo because I really like the shape of the power pole, and now looking at the photo I also appreciate the houses in the distance, which make the shot feel like an establishing shot for a scene that is about to take place close to those houses. This is why I felt that the wide aspect ratio would be fitting again. Apart from that, there's not much I can say, I think overall the outcome is okay. Then, I continued to walk along the field and spotted another composition that might work for another self-portrait. This is the result, and I don't really like it. I think I should stick to running when trying to pose in these photos. It looks more natural and also more pleasing than these walking poses. And the composition here is quite cool actually. The power poles add a lot of subframing to the photo and my position in the composition turned out perfect here. Again, I enjoy the additional element of the houses in the background and how in the distance we can only just see the trees. However, overall, the photograph doesn't touch me somehow. Although many things align nicely, something doesn't fit right, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's the line of trees in the middle. I imagine this photo would look so much better from a higher perspective, which would allow us to see the size of the field and the area that the small trees cover. I continued my walk and for quite some time I didn't find anything that I felt compelled to shoot. At one point, I came to this junction where I spotted these two mirrors which I liked as a subject. I thought they looked cool. This is the photo and I like it. It's super simple but effective I find. I still like the subject and the background is the field slowly fading away into the mist which results in this very quiet, unobtrusive background, which is what makes it work so well I think. A detail I find pretty pleasant is the patch of snow next to the subject. It makes the photo unique in a way that there are many conditions that were met to see the scene exactly as it is here. The fog and the leftover snow that is slowly melting away and only left in the shape of a couple patches scattered around the area are abnormal conditions and to see them together surrounding the subject makes the photograph pretty unique in my opinion. I walked further and along the street I eventually came to another junction where I thought that I might be able to find a composition. As I was composing a shot, a car approached me from behind, so I stepped aside and let it pass, and then realised that this car might be the perfect subject. This is the shot, and obviously it didn't really work out. The car is barely visible in the distance, and the Christmas lights on the house to the left are more present than the car's back lights. Therefore, they steal the attention, which makes the focus of this photograph feel quite messy. So to try to fix that in post, I decided to make a heavily cropped version, which in my opinion works far better. The entire photograph is now coloured in this deep blue, except for the two lights over the car, which now effectively strike out as the main focus, because the lights of the house are cropped out in this version. In total, I think this version is quite nice, I find it feels very filmic. Then I left the junction and just continued to walk down the street until I came to this neighbourhood, where I found a nice bin standing next to a road sign. As some of you probably know, I just have this fondness for bins somehow, I can't really explain it, but simply put, I think they are often great subjects, and in this case I like how it is positioned next to the road sign, which strengthens the emphasis on this part of the image and sets a clear focus. What gives the bin a neat touch that crowns it as the subject is the red top which adds some strong colour contrast against the entire rest of the photo. While this shot seems a bit more aimless possibly compared to the previous ones, I really like it. There are many elements that I can look at and focus on in detail which seems to enrich the photograph in context. 
As I continued to walk through the neighborhood, I passed this building site and then came to a cute path that led to a small lake surrounded by trees. The lake has a trail going around it, so I decided to walk along the lake in the hopes to find something to capture. As I came here, I spotted two ducks swimming, which I thought could work wonderfully as two subjects. Here is the result, and I think it's beautiful. The photograph is so calm and peaceful, but it's not at all lifeless thanks to the ducks. What I enjoy about the ducks is that they are a pair, not just a duck alone. I find that this creates a story, a relationship between the two swimming across the lake in the fog, enjoying their togetherness. Despite the cold blue look of the photo, the two ducks add a sense of warm romance to the photograph in my opinion. I like it. I walked on and kept an eye out for more possible compositions and found a tree hanging over the water which I thought looked pretty cool. Here's the shot and I like it. Again, it feels so calm and peaceful. The lake with the fog is just this big patch of softly changing blue hues and on the right then comes the tree to add some compositional structure to the photo. The way the branches hang from the tree looking down to the water add to the feeling of tranquility and further right and a bit at the bottom we get a glimpse of the entire scene with the path that I was walking. Next I wanted to get a closer up photo of the branches. Here's the result, and I think this one turned out beautifully. I decided to give this photograph a square crop, which here is fitting, I think, because the square aspect ratio conveys the stillness of the photo. The content of the photo itself is very minimalistic and can be summarized in lake, fog, some trees, and the branches, whereby everything apart from the branches is a blur or a melted combination of the lake, the fog, and the trees, which can only be recognized thanks to slight tonal changes. And then the branches are the clear subject here and just like in the previous photo they suit the scene well and add to the peacefulness of the photograph. Then I walked further along the path and at one point I turned around to look back at where I came from. I liked the scene I saw and so I decided to try to photograph it. This is the result, and I think this turned out nicely. The scene shows this interesting mix of the lake, the path, and then a couple of houses. The combination totally adds to the calmness, I find, because it makes me think of this cold, misty day and the people living in the houses enjoying the warmth and coziness of their home. In terms of composition, I enjoy how the path I came from is this perfect leading line, or curve actually, that leads us around the lake and to the houses. Next, I found a path that enters the forest here, and so I thought this could be a cool place to explore. But before I show you that, I would like to take a minute to give a shout out to our consistent sponsor of the channel, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community for learning, well, skills obviously. They have a platform with thousands of classes for creative people, so this goes from filmmaking, illustration, business, all the way to photography. So Skillshare is basically a curated collection of video classes in which a teacher shares their knowledge. Because it's specifically laid out for efficient learning, the classes are neatly organized and there are of course no ads, and additionally they are constantly adding new classes to the collection. A class I can personally recommend is this product photography class by Rachel Glodder and Daniel Inskeep. While product photography is not my typical lane of work, I always enjoy the slightly unconventional and creative approach Rachel and Daniel have in their YouTube videos, and this class here is no exception. So the people from Skillshare have created a link for me to share with you, with which the first 1000 people to click the link in the description get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare. So if you think this sounds interesting, I would much appreciate you using my link because that lets Skillshare know that you're from this community and that I'm doing a good job. Thank you.
So let's continue with the walk through the forest. I love the forest and this one was also beautiful, although in the footage I must say the wet winter conditions make the forest look not exactly inviting. I passed this tent kind of construction here which somebody built and came closer to the river where I spotted something. This is the shot, and I think it's pretty cool. What initially caught me here are the two trees that hang over the scene and give the composition a wonderful curved subframe, and I think it worked great. It's subtle, but very effective, I find. The scene itself presented in the subframe is also pretty interesting. I find this environment with the river flowing through the forest quite unique. So overall, I really like this one. Next, I turned around to get a photo of the tent. This is it, and it's okay, but nothing special. I think what I'm missing here is some more interesting light. The tent is intriguing, but inside the tent, the light is so soft and even that it feels a bit too neutral, maybe. The composition, on the other hand, is splendid in my opinion, with all the trees on the sides framing the scene, so maybe with a different lighting situation, this could become good. Then, I continued my walk through the forest and eventually found a spot where I decided to try one of those self-portraits again. I don't know. The location is beautiful, just on the camera, I really can't judge if that just worked or not. I'll do a couple more and then just see in post if it actually worked out. Um, but I'm really liking this place, even though I'm not really finding any compositions, at least I'm having a hard time to find any. This is it, and I think it worked, even though I don't think it's particularly great in any way. I graded it very darkly in blue, which gives the scene this mysterious and almost suspenseful feeling, although I would also argue that the forest with the mist has a slightly enchanted character. I'm overall not really sure about this photograph though, it's cool, but somehow I'm not so fond of it. I don't exactly know why though. Then, I found another path in the forest that I thought could work as a place for a self-portrait again. Shooting in the forest I usually find quite hard and it is proving itself as hard again. I don't know what it is, it's just that it's so busy and as you know I usually shoot more of these more quiet, calm, clean photos not such busy photos, so I'm having my difficulties right now. I'll have to see in post what these look like. It's really hard to judge on the camera. The thing is, for my eyes, this place is absolutely gorgeous. Just I'm really having difficulties finding a, a good composition here. But maybe, maybe the ones I got here are right anyway. I don't know. Hard to, hard to guess. Here's the shot. And as unsure as I was feeling after shooting these, I still feel that way. I'm satisfied with the look now, the dark blue look of a misty forest seems quite captivating to me, but something feels off. Which is why I feel this uncertainty about the photo, it's very hard for me to tell though what it precisely is. Let me know what you think, maybe that'll spark an idea that will lead me to the right thought. Anyway, that was the last photograph, after that I came out of the forest and slowly made my way back home, during which I didn't find anything else. This session was another beautifully misty one, however unusually I feel so unsure about the results, so again I'd appreciate any thought sharing in the comments so that I get some other input. I think my favourites of this session are either the self portraits right at the beginning or one of the photos at the lake. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode, if so I'd appreciate a like, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.